Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Rangers Review Morning Briefing for Friday, the 21st of January. It's game day as Rangers kick off their Scottish Cup campaign against Stirling Albion at Ibrox this evening. Joshua Barry is here to look ahead to the game. How are we doing, Joshua? Good, yeah, very much looking forward to it, Derek. Uh, been a while since since we've been at Ibrox, so um, looking forward to the game, looking forward to seeing a little bit of a different team and um, hopefully some goals. So, yeah, it's um, ho hopefully be a good day. Yeah, absolutely. Um, folks, if you're watching us on YouTube, so many of you are, just hit that subscribe button so you'll never miss a video when we go live. Um, very much appreciated. And also, we've still got that great offer on uh, for January just now. Take advantage of it while it's there. It's uh, absolutely free for the first month. Um, £2.99 per month thereafter. Just head over to rangersreview.co.uk forward slash subscribe and support top quality journalism covering the club you love. Okay, lots to talk about, Joshua. The press conference uh, was held by Giovanni van Bronckhorst and John Lundstrom yesterday. Uh, a few interesting points to note from the manager. First of all, uh, the first being that, that Kimar Roof uh, is back in contention. The game comes too soon tonight for the likes of Scott Arfield and Stephen Davis. They're expected to return next week. Ryan Jack also comes too soon uh, for him. Leon Balligan expected to feature as well this evening, but um, for me, Kima Roof is a big one because uh, it's vitally important with uh, Alfredo Morelos uh, heading off on international duty soon that, that he's back uh, fit again. Yeah, 100%, Derek. Um, and obviously, I, th I think tonight in the next couple of games will probably show us whether the manager wants to try Sakala centrally over the next few games or Roof. I think it'll be one of those two. I, I don't see it in yet. Um, jumping ahead of those, of, of those two players in the pecking order. But, you know, Roof's up on his day. Because this season he's, he's played so inconsistently and sporadically and obviously hasn't played really under the new manager, as we mentioned yesterday, um, it's easy to forget how, how good he was at points last season, how uh, how influential he was. And, and, you know, if we go into the Rangers going to the firm with um, a front three of, you know, Kent, Sakala and Roof, or perhaps a, a right winger that's signed this um, this January, that you know, that's that's a, that's a strong strong attack, um, with or without Morelos. It might even be, in in a sense, it might even be an advantage to have someone like Roof up there, um, yeah, instead of Morelos, who has played really well in in Old Firms, um, previously. But um, you know, uh, there's been occasions where the the occasion has has got ahead of uh, the performance, if you will, for him. So uh, yeah, if if, if if Roof can show consistently over in the next couple of games, but also just remain fit consistently. Um, then, then I'd be uh, qu quite confident with him going into the old firm in, in that central striker role. And again, let's not forget he's not too dissimilar in some ways to Morelos. Um, he's perhaps not got this the same strength or the ability to roll players, but he can act as, as somewhat of a focal point. Really comfortable taking the ball into feet and and has such a good um, scoring record. Had the highest xG per nineteen the, the division last season. So it'd be interesting to see what the manager does. I don't think he'd, he'd throw Roof right in tonight. Um, I tend to think it will be Sakala, <clears throat> maybe off the maybe off the left, um, with with it in central. But um, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, absolutely. Um, some comments coming out about the the transfer activity. Of course, we're in the the January transfer window. Uh, Van Bronckhorst did speak about this. He was quizzed on uh, on that yesterday. Um, with regards to John Suter, he was asked if there's a chance of bringing him in in January. He says John is a Rangers player from next season on, so that hasn't changed. At this moment, he won't be joining us, but this window is still open for 11 days, so anything can happen. Uh, for me, it's still uncertain how the squad will look in 11 days, but you have to be prepared. Now, he has said previously uh, he would be keen to get bring in one more player. Um, Topo gets in touch. He's slightly concerned. Uh, Ross Wilson has a reputation for keeping his cards close to his chest, but the lack of transfer rumours and signing talks starting to become uh, a worry. Um, you don't really hear anything from Rangers with regards to transfer targets, Joshua, and it, it, Ross Wilson does like to keep his cards close to his chest. You, you never really hear about it uh, until something concrete uh, is confirmed. Um, what do you make of this? I think I think we're all in agreement that that would, uh, uh, that would benefit the squad if Rangers were to bring in at least one more player, uh, just to add a bit of freshness and, and preferably a cre creative player as well. Yeah, and if you go back to the press conference in, in which Giovanni Van Bronckhorst was unveiled, Ross Wilson said if money goes out, if a player goes out, money will be reinvested back in the squad. Um, and obviously, although the player trading model is, you know, 
to help the club um, have that that solid financial base. It's also the priority. Is all always what happens on the football pitch, and, and um, I think that's a, a foregone conclusion. Without hearing from from the club or without rumours being um, that rife. I personally think that's a good thing. Um, I think that shows the club conducting the business in the right way. And I'd take you back to when the manager came in, um, the new manager came in. You know, Ross Wilson has spoken a lot about processes, work behind the scenes, and perhaps work that, you know, doesn't necessarily... The, the benefits of it doesn't don't come to fruition until until they need to. Um, and to appoint a manager um, within a week... Uh, in such a, a busy stage of the season, you know, Rangers, if they weren't as prepared, look at what's happening with Everton at the moment, for example, who don't seem to know if they're appointing an interim or if they're appointing a full-time coach, what style of coach they want to appoint. Rangers had a clear idea of the type of coach they want to appoint. Ross Wilson had, um, has, had, had said after that he tracked Giovanni and, and a number of others during uh, Stephen Gerrard's tenureship at the club. So I think that's the type of processes that, um, are in place at the, cl the club. So I, I wouldn't be worried about a lack of rumours at all. I'd, I'd take it as a positive. I think that shows that the club are doing the business properly and I think that will help them with um, the relationship with other clubs. I think if you look at <clears throat> sometimes if noises come out about a transfer and it's evident that it comes out from the other side, I don't think clubs will appreciate necessarily being kind of used as a used to build up noise um, for, for, from opposing teams. So I'd, I'd say it's a positive. I'm sure there's a lot of hard work going on in, in the background. Um, and and I think listen, January is a hard market, Derek. But I think everyone would probably agree that Rangers need to improve their first eleven. And although the retention of the likes of Kamara, Morelos, Kent, Aribo over the last couple of seasons, in a sense, in a roundabout way, does that, Rangers haven't made the signing that maybe roof aside, um, in, in a while that has went into that starting eleven right away and made an yeah. impact. And they do need someone on the right side, probably of midfield, um, that can come in and do that. And, and I'm, I think that will happen before the end of the window just because of Wilson's comments at, the, at that press conference and looking at the way he's done business in the past. Yeah, many people w would have felt that John Lundstrom would have been one of those players that would have uh, uh, mm -hmm. enhanced that first team when he joined in the summer. We'll talk about him uh, a little later on. And John Dooley gets in touch. Uh, good morning, Derek and Joshua. Is there any truth in the rumours about Andy Scoff Olsen joining? Um, I'm led to believe that the Bruges still lead the way for um, him. Um, it's not nothing has has been signed yet for the the Bologna uh, winger, <clears throat> but I believe that. But Bruges, according to reports coming out of Belgium, they're still leading the way. Apparently, FC Copenhagen also uh, keen on bringing him back to Denmark as well. So um, I think that's uh, one to keep an eye on. But uh, he's certainly a player that's been heavily linked to Rangers in the in the last few weeks, there's no doubt about it. Um, and I'd imagine that there may be activity before the window closes, uh, perhaps ins uh, and outs at Ibrox. It'll be, it'll be interesting to see uh, what happens. But I think everyone's in agreement that, that a player, uh, bringing, bringing in a player before the window closes would be uh, beneficial for the, the title running. Um, there's a comment, we touched on it last week um, with regards to uh, Lewis Ferguson, uh, William uh, Lang gets in touch and he's going for Lewis Ferguson. He thinks he, he'd, he'd fit in great, um, linked with a, a move to, to Italy. Like many of Aberdeen's players at the moment, Joshua, I think, I think we've touched on Lewis Ferguson. Uh, I think he's a decent player, but we're highlighting the fact that, again, does he improve the first 11? I think he's more of a, a squad player and Rangers have got many of those at the moment. Yeah, and he had a good game against Rangers. Um, but I think, you know, I've wrote on or, uh, the site this week about the substitution that kind of gave Aberdeen midfield control. And, and I think both Ferguson and Brown benefited a, a lot from that. Um, you know, I, I, and, and I, I agree. I don't think he really improves the first 11. Obviously, an established and, and proven Scottish Premiership player. Scored a lot of goals for Aberdeen. Um, but I, I, no, I don't think he improves the first 11. So I, that, that for me, that's not the type of, of signing. Rangers need a little bit of depth, I think, at number eight. Um, but arguably, they could say you could say they need another starting midfielder, perhaps, um, to come in. If, you, if you're looking at Kamara and Aribo are you know, certain to play in any midfield. And perhaps you need a, a player, a, a number eight in, in between them that um, can help progress the ball, but also can... Can do a number of things. I know we've all seen Joey Veerman has had st such a positive start to his uh, career after after his move um, in, in Holland. And although that signing never happened, I think that's the type of player, the caliber of player that needs to improve the 
be, be brought in to, to improve the first team if you're going to um, make that type of signing um, or, or a right winger. So, yeah, I don't think Ferguson necessarily is, is, uh, is, is for me, the, the, the type of player we need to, to bring in tie box. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to touch uh, on uh, John Lundstrom's comments uh, yesterday, Joshua. Um, he was speaking uh, ahead of the game tonight, uh, which suggests that he's probably going to feature. Um, we've not really seen much of him this season. I think the jury is, is very much still out on him. Uh, I asked him how frustrating it's been um, to be sort of flipping in and out, out of the team this season. and Sort of interesting uh, response uh, that he gave me, says that, it's, uh, it's it's difficult to come in and, and be expected to set the world alight when you haven't had a run uh, in the team. I think for any player to build up some form, you need to have a run of games. Um, I'm no different, but obviously when the opportunity does come for yourself, you have to take it and impress. I definitely just want to impress and try to get a run in the team. Um, what do you make of the comments from John Lindstrom? Um, I think he's one of those players that everyone wants to see succeed. Um, he's got all the attributes, but it just hasn't quite worked for him as yet, Ibrox, hasn't it? Yeah, well, um, uh, Johnny obviously wrote a piece, I think, two weeks ago about the, with a headline, something along the lines of, uh, I can't remember, perfect, perfect movie, doom, something, yeah. there's something creative, but it was basically yeah. saying that it looked, <laughs> like, it looked like it looked like it was going to work for a while. You look back to the summer and, and he uses the, the, um, anecdote of, of the Slavia Prague games where Rangers in midfield did look like they were lacking someone who A, could carry the ball, but B, could just be really combative and dominate that space. And um, Unfortunately for Lundstrom, he's hardly really played in many games like that. Um, it's taken him time, I think, well, it took him time in the first instance to adapt. We know that. Got into to Stephen Gerrard's midfield, looked really good at number six for a few games. And, you know, that Hearts game um, in particular at home, um, he, he, was, he was really promising. People have a lot of criticism for him, um, but I, I tend to agree with what he said yesterday, Derek, that he's also not had a, a real regular run in the team in a while. And and it's and it's so hard to judge a player when, um, you know, the, the, the factors have changed in terms of he's not played that much under Van Bronckhorst when he's played. It's been sporadic. Um, perhaps sometimes, I, at Dundee United at home, I, I, I didn't think he got on the ball very well and, and that was a bit of a, probably a concern. Again, sometimes you're maybe unsure what the tactical instruction is because that's not necessarily been an issue beforehand, but he's certainly not as good at Glenn Kamara and that kind of role when it's his responsibility to, to move the ball through the midfield. Um, and, but he's a, he's a big earner and, and, and you know one of the first-team players at the club, so I guess there needs to be some resolution with what happens because James Sands playing ahead of him, again, I did think that was a bit of a surprise and, and especially given the fact that I thought perhaps given Sands would start, you'd see Rangers maybe fluctuate their shape and build up with Sands dropping into the back three just to give Aberdeen a different problem. And, and that maybe superseded his um, selection over at Lundstrom, but that didn't that didn't happen. Um, so, so it's uh, an interesting one. We also seen Lundstrom play at centre-back. I think it was Hibs away for the kind of final 10 minutes. Yeah, Whether that was just a necessity, who knows. But um, yeah, yeah. It feels Derek. He's he's a big earner, and and there's value in him. And if Van Bronckhorst doesn't doesn't see a way to use that, and I'm, I'm not saying that he does, but if then you'd suppose that he would he would go to another club because he he won't want to sit on the bench for half a season as well. You know, he he could go and play at the top end of the Championship, um, un, undoubtedly. And and let's not forget, had a really good season in the Premiership two two three seasons ago. So, um, if he starts tonight, I hope he has a really good game, um, but. It's hard to see how he gets a run of, run of games with Glenn Kamara playing at number six. Yeah, it's an interesting point that, that Mark Lynch makes there. You can see on the screen, um, he should be get, getting forwards in, in, into the box. It's what he did for Sheffield United and, and did ever so well uh, in that role. It's a different role. He's been asked to play at Rangers, of course, and it has taken him time um, to, to sort of adapt. It, it's, it's not been easy for him, of course. He arrived uh, under Stephen Gerrard. He was a Gerrard signing. Um, the manager leaves and... Uh, just a third of the way through the season, um, and then and then he's starting from scratch again. So uh, it's not been an easy ride for him by by any matter of means. But um, uh, I think, I think on, Derek, just sorry to jump in on that point is is I think on, in terms of getting into the box, you you have seen at times, and and that's why we speak, you know spoke about the Slavia Prague game because in a transitional game where you perhaps there, there's more space both in the defense and the attack uh, even Bromby he got forward a few times at home against Bromby and he did look good he's got that shot on him 
but Sheffield United, I just think it's, it's so different, obviously, playing in, in, in that team compared to when you're playing for Rangers at home. I mean, if anyone has any doubts, cast your mind back to the first half against St Mirren when that, you know, St Mirren, the, the game was played condensed within a third, almost a quarter at times of the pitch. And that's just such a different game. You, you've seen Lundstrom in his first, one of his first starts for Rangers against London United, Derek, how much he struggled to drop in and dictate the play from... You remember with the, the old rotations under Gerrard where Tavernier would push high. And he spoke about that at the time, how it took him time to adapt to that. So I think there is certain games where, where that would suit him. He is really strong. He is powerful. A few times under Gerrard when he was when Gerrard was um, trying to, to bed him into the squad, Ross County away, St Johnston away, the old firm win, yeah. he actually came on and played that box-to-box role and looked good for the final 20 minutes because there was that space to hit. Um, but I think the difficulty is... You know, when he starts against Stone Albion tonight, there's not going to be that space for him to hit, um, and that's perhaps why his his forward role has been, um, you know, slightly slightly withdrawn. Um, but I I I I, th- I think the number six role is is best position for Rangers because he can be combative. But I do agree in in certain games, you will see more of his attributes when that space opens up. And and him and Sakala were kind of they felt like European signings because that's what Rangers had had lacked, um, but obviously lots of mitigating factors have, have stopped that kind of happening so far. Yeah, uh, it'd be interesting. I think everyone hopes that, that he does well this evening and stakes a claim because uh, Rangers are going to be stretched over the next uh, uh, couple of weeks, there's no doubt about it. Um, players away on international duty, of course, Joe Rebo and Alfredo Morelos. Uh, um, it remains to be seen if there'll be any more um, called up, but um, certainly it's an opportunity, you'd imagine, this evening for John Lindstrom uh, to stake a claim. And it may be an opportunity for uh, a number of young players uh, to impress Joshua. Uh, Giovanni van Bronckhorst mentioned that it's a perfect opportunity um, to uh, play these guys tonight. Um, they're taking on a, no disrespect to Sterling Albion, but I think... It, I think Rangers B team would give them a game. Uh, uh, it's, it's, you should be able to uh, bleed a number of youngsters. Uh, and in fact, Van Bronckhorst made a, an interesting point with regards to substitutions. He can only make three subs in the Scottish yeah. Cup uh, and it's five in the Scottish Premiership, which seems a bit bizarre, but um, he called in the, the governing body to look at that. Um, I think it would uh, benefit the, the Scottish game as a whole if uh, you were allowed to make uh, five subs in, in, in the Cup game and allow more young players to get an opportunity. Um, but it, it Touched on uh, Alex Lowry, he says he's in the squad. He says a big talent come through the academy. I imagine we'll be seeing him at some point tonight, uh, as well as the likes of Leon King and Charlie McCann, who were on the bench on mm-hmm. Tuesday night. Are you excited to see these boys in action, Joshua? Yeah, I'd, I'd like, really like to see Leon King start. I think he's probably the most likely to start, given that he's um, had a few appearances and now is a full, fully fledged member of, of, of the first team. Um, I, I, I I guess there's a possibility that one of uh, Lowry and, and McCann start in midfield, but I tend to think it will maybe be a, a Lundstrom, Bakuna, Hadji. Uh, three with, with Hadji more advanced, and, and Bakuna obviously needs a chance um, to, to play at some point. He needs to take that chance uh, as well, but I'd expect him to play tonight. Um, so, so, yeah, maybe it'll be a case of one or two starting and another one or two coming on. But as you said, Van Bronckhorst was quick to mention that he only had three substitutions and therefore might be limited. And I really don't think it's going to be a... I think put out a really strong team, Derek. I mean, you look at look to what um, Man City do in the cup, um, and they always seem, you know, Van Bronckhorst has a a, a team of um, a, a big squad to keep happy. Although a lot of them, a few of them, are injured at the moment. Um, there was that famous Man City lineup. I think they went to a third division or fourth division club three seasons ago, and they put out effectively a first strength eleven. And, and that that approach, I was reading about it recently. It, it was. Um, I guess in large yeah, to, to keep the to keep the squad happy and you know make sure that people like Bakuna need to have minutes probably ahead of the youngsters at, at the moment or along alongside because he hasn't played much at all and, and and the manager will need to prioritize that as well as trying to give these young players a chance. Lowry looks really exciting, um, so I'd like to see a glimpse of him at, at one point. But I think that will be the the midfield, perhaps Leon Balogun next to Leon King at the back. Might we see Kelvin Bassey push out to left back? And yeah. Uh, you know, give give him. A, I know he'll he'll have been desperate to have a run out there because he does love a uh, left back, but it's been so promising. Uh, Centre back, uh, Tavernier undoubtedly starts at right back. I think you'll see probably similar to the St. Mirren game, him inverting and trying to find those central pockets with just one deep midfielder and and a Scott Wright, um, or maybe even a, a Ryan Kent out wide ahead of him. And um, given that the fashions, Callum might start on the left, and 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 Cedric hitting through the middle. You, you'd imagine. Um, 
box presence unless Hikawa starts to the middle. I think it'll be interesting. It'll give us a, an insight into what the, the plan is when Morelos is away. Because if Sakala is to play that central striker role when Morelos is away, I think it would be good to give him a few run, a few uh, get games in a row in, in, in that position. Yeah, uh, that leads us nicely on. Actually, there's a piece on the, the website this morning, folks. Um, I've done a, 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 a feature piece on who should lead the line for Rangers when Alfredo Morelos heads off with Colombia. Um, so we've got uh, Cedric Eaton, um, Fashion Sakala, and Kima Roof uh, profiled. Who do you think is uh, best suited to, to fill that void. Um, go and check it out. Remember, we've got a fantastic offer on just now. It's absolutely free for the first month. Just head over to uh, rangersreview.co.uk forward slash subscribe um, and check it out mm. there. Okay, that will do us there. Thanks to everyone for getting in touch as ever. It's absolutely uh, fantastic to uh, get all the, the interaction from uh, everyone watching us uh, in the morning so we appreciate it um, if you're heading along to the match tonight enjoy it and um, we'll be back again on Monday uh, to review uh, the game and all the, the news over the weekend but until then uh, enjoy your Friday and your weekend